welcome to podcast.init, the podcast about Python and the people who make it great. I would like to thank everyone who supports us on Patreon. Your contributions help to make the show sustainable. When you're ready to launch your next project, you'll need somewhere to deploy it. So you should check out Linode at www.podcastinit.com slash Linode and get a $20 credit to try out their fast and reliable Linux virtual servers for running your next app. Do you need to learn more about how to scale your apps or learn new techniques for building them? Pluralsight has the training and mentoring you need to level up your skills. Go to www.podcastinit.com slash Pluralsight to start your free trial today. You can visit the site to subscribe to the show, sign up for the newsletter, read the show notes, get in touch, and support the show. To help other people find the show, please leave a review on iTunes or Google Play Music, tell your friends and coworkers, and share it on social media. If you work with data for your job or want to learn more about how open source is powering the latest innovations in data science, then make your way to the Open Data Science Conference, happening in London in October and San Francisco in November. Follow the links in the show notes to register. Your host as usual is Tobias Macy, and today I'm interviewing Liam Shum about Ergonomica. Uh, so Liam, could you please introduce yourself? So I am, um, my name's Liam, I'm a high school student from Chicago at Walter Payton College Prep, and uh, sort of a hobby Python enthusiast. I've been programming for about four years, I suppose like the last year and a half uh, more seriously and really getting into things. And I attended PyCon 2017, which really sort of boosted my, my Python enthusiasm and career. And I've just really been enjoying um, developing open source tools on, on GitHub ever since. So do you remember what first got you introduced to programming in general and Python in particular? So my first my first programming experience was in Python. My dad taught a class at um, the the school I was attending, and uh, it was just a very basic introduction to Python, a uh, very basic Pi game setup. We followed a book made little thing where you moved uh, moved a guy around and he caught pizza. It was just very basic applications, and also uh, one of the Asteroids games. So sort of pretty simple uh, applications. And I sort of forgot about Python for two years since that. And then I sort of got back interested when I when I got into Minecraft, actually got into Minecraft servers and realized that like programming was something that allowed you to automate the tasks that you do every day. And I found it really cool that you could just like write some program and it would automatically do that. So then I started getting into, since I was really into math at the time and still am, I made some very simple like calculators, some things that like post simple arithmetic, uh, a few things with with a command line interface, and from there I just I've been creating everything I, <laughs> I use every day in Python, like my init scripts for for my computer written in Python. I've just gradually been replacing each manual tool <laughs> tool in my life with with Python and just finding more and more applications. To, to use Python in my, my daily life, everything from my schoolwork to day-to-day -day tasks. It's definitely pretty great when the light switch goes off and you start to realize that you can actually start creating the tools that you're using instead of having to purely be a consumer of them and you can actually make them work the way that you want them to. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And going back to PyCon, you said that you had a good experience there. I'm just wondering if you have any other sort of similar event that you've been to that you have, can use as a comparison and what your thoughts are on PyCon in general and what was most valuable to you? So I, I, had, a, I had a really wonderful experience at PyCon. I would say that um, what was the most valuable experience to me was the, the sprints. I sprinted on the PyB project. Uh, I know you've interviewed Russell about, about that project. And I found that uh, just such a wonderful experience because I got to collaborate with people from all around the world, from Australia to Mexico. And over, I believe I was there for four days, over four days, just craft friendships with other developers, build really cool products, and just, just make connections in the Python community. Yeah, I, I found that the expo hall was like kind of interesting, and I met a few people, but overall, uh, overall the sprints were, were the funnest part. I haven't had a great experience at, at Chippy, which is the um, Chicago Python users group, but that may have just been chance. One um, one event that I found great in Chicago was something called Shy Hack Night, where it also took the breakout group format in which people just presented um, projects in civic tech that they were working on, and anybody could join them, and there were free like <laughs> soda and food. So I th I think just all of those events, and as well as like hackathons I've went to. The best experiences I've had have been in in group like project building settings. 
And so bringing the conversation around to the project that you are the main author of, uh, wondering if you can just briefly describe what Ergonomica is and the reason that you first created it. Sure. So essentially what Ergonomica is, is the shell language we designed from the ground up in Python. And what inspired me to do this is I, um, when I first started getting into bash scripting, I found it really cool that I could just navigate my file systems with commands and it was so much faster than uh, Finder on the Mac. And I, I found it pretty cool. And eventually once I started getting into more advanced stuff, once I got past just like simple, simple editing and like Emacs, I wanted to build scripts to like manage my files. And I found that really frustrating because Essentially, what you had to do is you had to go on Stack Overflow and you had to copy and paste like those bash scripts with like tar attack and then C of options that nobody really has any idea uh, what they what they mean. So an XKCD comic where I believe Rob has to enter a valid tar command or in ten seconds or the bomb will explode, and he's he's like, sorry guys, I can't do it because. Like the the traditional Unix system is really powerful, and I think it's it's been designed it's been designed really well. And a testament to that is just like how long it survived, and that stuff in my uh, Unix programming environment uh, book from the seventies like still works on a modern modern computer. It's it's been it was designed really well, but I think um, it sort of needs a modern refresh, and sort of. Where I took inspiration for how I built Ergonomica from was, was from Python. So Python is, um, has very sparse syntax. It has very few like symbols and special things that you need to put in your syntax. Uh, and in Python, whenever you want to do something, it's obvious the way that you do it. So for example, if you wanted to see if some element is in an array, you just say element in array. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Or for loops for item in array. Or um, an example from PyCon, dictionary comprehension syntax, it's natural if you know list comprehension syntax to follow that syntax, just put curly braces in it. Since dictionaries are iterable, you have dictionary comprehension syntax. And I think that was the, the motivation behind, behind the pep for that. And I found it really useful in learning Python that everything was so easily discoverable and wish that that would be the way in Bash. And sort of what I tried to do uh, over time is find a balance between easy discoverability and like modern language features and also what what's realistic in like a shell setting because obviously you need to be able to type commands fast and do the same kinds of operations over and over. So I kind of found a balance between traditional POSIX syntax, which it's great that you can just Instead of needing to have parentheses and commas, you can just have a function and then it's arguments. And then if you want to do substitution, you do parentheses and a dollar sign. So that, I found that syntax really useful. But then the, like, the conditional syntax, like if, um, closing an if block with fee, that's from algol68. And it's just not, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. So... Basically, I found a balance between like the POSIX sort of bash syntax and, and the Python syntax and um, basically aimed to create something that was not only ergonomic <laughs> in the same way that I found bash initially, that you could just CD to directories, LS, that that was easy, and then also provide like discoverability and the ease of use and like natural naturalness of, of the syntax uh, as Python. And building a shell is definitely a non-trivial endeavor, particularly given the number of different overlapping standards that play into the standard terminal environment with VT100 emulation and escape codes and all of the different things that you have to think about. So I'm wondering, how did you obtain the necessary knowledge to be able to build Ergonomica and have it useful? And what are some of the most challenging aspects that you've had to overcome in the process? So, I mean, just, just really trial and error. I remember my first uh, command line application. I kind of like, <laughs> kind of like making command line applications. It, um, it took a command's arguments and split them, and it had a separate case in a if-elif for each 
like length of arguments. Like if I had one argument, two arguments, three arguments, and <laughs> just over time, I've sort of, it, sort of through trial and error, figured out the best way to approach those kinds of things. Thankfully, because of how um, the, the the extensive standard library of Python with things like OS, shutil, I actually haven't really had to dig into system stuff with Python. I haven't had to dig into like uh, terminal escape codes. Uh, Colorama is a great library that allows you to like color output without having to deal with any of that. So I actually, um, I did not have to learn terribly many prerequisites for, for, for creating it initially. Um, as it grew, I needed to uh, sort of ensure that it it was a functional language and that like you could do you could do the tasks you wanted in it. So for the knowledge of like how a shell is typically used, I just uh, like searched uh, questions tag bat, uh, bash on Stack Overflow and saw various things that like people could do in the shell. Tried doing them myself and tried like implementing them in Ergonomica. And then uh, another another helpful thing I did was read through some old Unix books and look through the examples there and look through how they how they initially laid out the usage for the shell to be, and just tried to make to tried to make my shell congruent to that. So thanks to Python, I really haven't had to learn terribly many technical prerequisites for for creating it. And I'm wondering if you can dig into how you actually implemented it and the software architecture that you're using and the way that you're actually processing the inputs. Sure. So um, I've had three major rewrites of the syntax. The initial one used just my own tokenizer that just went through tokens and like split them. And that was terribly buggy. And then I moved to David Beasley's PyLaxiac for, for tokenization, which was really a major step forward because this allowed me to um, specify like a formal, a formal grammar for Ergonomica, and that really helped, um, helped the stability of the product. But I, I didn't really get context-free grammars and how to like use how to use well his implementation of Yak very well. So sort of looking at bash syntax often if you want if you want to like substitute in the value of command so uh, for example if you were gonna look at the source code for the command uh, I don't know ls you would do cat and then dollar sign parentheses uh, which ls and uh, in that syntax after going through writing some stuff in Emacs Lisp, I realized that that syntax and then also the function and then argument syntax without like parentheses, that was kind of similar to Lisp. So then I, I kept that in the back of my mind for a while while still maintaining the old code base. And then I ran into this article called How to Write a Lisp Interpreter in Python by a guy named, I believe, Peter Norvig. Uh, so if you go to Nor at norvig.com, N-O-R-V-I-G.com slash L-I-S-P-Y dot HTML, it basically outlines how to write a Lisp interpreter in Python. And what's great about a Lisp interpreter in Python is, um, or just a Lisp interpreter in general, is you basically have two tokens. You have a parenthesis, left or right, and you have like an atom. And that really simplified, <laughs> simplified the parsing architecture. And... Um, as the nature of like functional functional programming languages are, it's it's a lot easier to implement um, just a simple functional programming language because each command in it or structure in it is basically just a function aside from the if statement, set, and lambda. And so essentially, basically what it does is it reads in these tokens and then converts them to to Python functions, because all, all ergonomica functions um, at the base level are just, just Python functions, and then evaluates them on the arguments. So the whole runtime is is implemented in Python. It is implemented with uh, tail call optimizations, so you're, you're able to build like larger structures in it, even though it's a functional programming language. But um, a lot of the a lot of the standard library functions that I've created have just been very simple. Lambda functions in in the namespace dictionary. I just map like I don't know add to a lambda function that adds its input arguments. So it's really simple, 
and I've made I've made an architecture for importing standard library functions. So it just you just import a function, stick it into a namespace, which is a standard Python uh, namespace with string a dictionary with strings mapping to functions. Just evaluates those functions based on the S expressions. When you started this project, were you aware of the some of the other alternative shells such as Zonch and, or I guess they pronounce it Conch and Fish and other shells implemented in other languages. And if so, did you use those to draw inspiration or did you decide to try and keep all of your ideas sort of pure by not trying to crib too much from the other options? I was actually um, inspired by, by other shell designs. And I think that all of them really bring something unique to the table. I have friends who use ZSH, friends who use Fish. I've met people who use Zonch at uh, Conch at PyCon. And I think that they all provide unique approaches to a shell, and I, I've, taken, I've taken some uh, extensive ins- inspiration from them. So basically, it seems that each has taken like a, a unique a unique approach. So ZSH, or the Z shell, it's one of the older one of the older ones of the set. It's totally bash words, so you can essentially copy paste your bash commands into Z, Z, ZSH and they'll work. And that's really convenient because that means if you want to do some operation on a file and use your standard uh, stable, powerful, fast Unix utilities to to do that, you can just like use the standard syntax and you can run shell scripts in it um, just like natively. So, and then what it what Z, uh, Z shell provides is more um, a more advanced uh, extension, uh, more advanced extension abilities. So you can build great like completion engines for Z shell. There's also some great uh, globbing and file globbing and other just other usability features for for in, in implemented in Z shell. And essentially, Z shell's approach was to just simply improve on bat, improve upon Bash, and then Fish Fish takes a more unique approach though, uh, not not nearly as radical as Ergonomica, uh, by allowing you to run your system commands and run them normally with pipes and all that, um, all that jazz, but just replaces like function definition syntax and like if statements, for statements. It sort of gives a modern overhaul to Bash as a, as a programming language. And the advantage of that is most, most Bash commands you can run in it, but then if you want to write a shell, uh, if you want to write a, a fish script, fish shell script, you can do it in a much nicer syntax than you than you would in Bash, and it's still pretty close to, close to what you're used to in Bash. And then Conch has taken what's a really really interesting approach, and seems to seems to work kind of well, is basically to just mingle Python and Bash syntax. So you, uh, the advantage of this is basically you can have like your while wow loops with like your Python variables that are like integers, and then you can call shell commands like within that script. So I think that's a really cool approach because that means that for people writing utilities for file and system management in Python, they can write their application in Python and then just like put a few lines in shell uh, of shell in there and then integrate that with the rest of the problem uh, with with the rest of the program and like set the output of those commands to variables. It offers a really great way of sort of using Python as your shell in, in, in a convenient way, which is, which is quite cool. And what Ergonomica has, has done is instead of uh, staying bash words and supporting bash syntax, it basically replaces all that syntax. It does support, obviously, because like <laughs> binaries like Git will never switch to uh, a pure Python implementation. It does uh, call upon uh, system binaries just using subprocess, but it's essentially overhauled hold all of the language except for just your ability to call those binaries, um, and essentially pulls in these these binaries just as normal Python functions, and c- sort of completely throws away all of the previous syntax. I have implemented like features like piping, and of course state somewhat um, POSIX compliant, but basically it's an entirely different language. All the control structures are different. The way you define functions, every function is a Lambda function. It's all like a, f- a functional programming language. It's a more radical overhaul of, of existing shell structures. 
And why did you decide to implement it in Python, particularly given the fact that you ended up settling on a Lisp dialect as the actual syntax for operating in the shell environment? So I I chose um, I chose Python for implementation because Python Python has really a wide reach in terms of in terms of um, high level programming languages. Python is used. Um, extensively in data analysis and scientific applications. It's used in uh, web applications, uh, the back end for Instagram, uh, <laughs> uh, same example. It's used really widely, and as a result, it has a very general standard library that allows you to do some really, um, s simplify some, some complex tasks. And because of its uh, sort of commitment to being cross-platform, your OS and uh, SHUtil, subprocess, uh, sys, all those libraries are totally cross-platform and just a great way of interacting with the system because Python's reach has, has extended to two system programs. And while um, many people still use shell scripts, there are, there are frameworks that use um, Python for system and file management. So I, I wanted to build upon both like the cross-platformness of Python and like the existing libraries that made things, system commands super, super easy. And just sort of just harness uh, the community that was replacing a lot of existing commands with, with Python commands, sort of rebuilding shell, uh, rebuilding computer specific binaries in, in Python for like cross platform goodness, also to modernize things and make them easier to maintain. I wanted to harness uh, the Python community in order to, to create a more usable, more usable shell experience, and also to make to make my job easier. And while you've been building Ergonomica, has it primarily been just for your own utility, or do you have a sort of target audience in mind as you're working on implementing new features and improving the capabilities of the shell? So as of yet, I'm <laughs> since it's terribly maybe less less unstable, but it's been in um, sort of alpha testing for a while now. I'm only the, the only current user as of yet, but. I guess my target user for for Ergonomica is your average user is um, a user that just wants to open a shell, have it work, not necessarily for your uh, stereotypical Unix uh, sysadmin who knows tar flags like the back of his hand. I think that um, at least what I'm trying to accomplish with Ergonomica is a shell that is usable, is sort of like human readable and human understandable, that is a lot easier to learn than bash and that also allows you to um to interface with it like through python so for people writing writing more simple shell scripts they can easily um i mean interface ergonomica since every command in ergonomica returns a python object boolean integer float string it also allows you to do like some some small script small scale scripting so I haven't, since I haven't had much of an audience so far, I haven't been able to really figure out who my target audience is, but I guess it's just people, <laughs> people using the shell, I suppose. And do you have any major features planned that you would like to implement in the future or that you would like to have any help with implementing? So I think um, replacing a lot of, so I, I've had a lot of frustration working with my friends at hackathons who use Windows computers. And um, I know one of them has switched to Ubuntu because of, because of Bash. I've had a lot of frustration um, that your very basic utilities that you'd expect in a Unix system, like less uh, Vim, are not present in Windows systems. And I've, I've already found uh, a project, um, Jonathan Slender's PyVim. He's basically implemented a Vim clone purely in, in Python in his Python prompt toolkit framework, which is basically terminal graphical framework without n curses. And I guess eventually making a clone of less would be interesting to allow people to uh, manipulate the outputs of, of their commands essentially in, in any shell. And just a variety of different standard Unix utilities that people people really use every day and that are stable and fast. I'd like to replicate those in, in Python in order to make those utilities, one, more like interfaceable with Python code, and number two, just give them a modern revamp, uh, give them like modern features and modern um, modern standards, I guess, essentially redesign them put, so they're like more maintainable and just essentially, essentially make those cross platforms. So just building up 
as I have, don't have much of a standard library existing, just building up the standard library so that it that it is a full functional system implemented in pure Python is is my eventual is my eventual goal. And implementing some of these utilities is a little daunting. <laughs> Have you looked at all at the work that's been going on in the Conch project with their replacements for some of the core system commands in pure Python implementations? I actually haven't. So I've actually just a few weeks ago started using Conch as my main shell on my local system as well as somewhat to, on my salt master as I'm working in it because of the features that you mentioned of being able to mix the syntaxes of Python and Unix commands so that you can merge the different variables and system calls together to be able to get a much more efficient hybrid uh, workflow. And one of the things that they've been working on is to actually do, as you said, and re-implement some of those core commands in Python so that it's easier to integrate it and get appropriate behavior as you're using it in the shell environment. So it would be interesting to see how much of that work you're able to incorporate into Ergonomica and maybe start collaboration on a sort of universal set of Unix tool replacements in pure Python that can be used across multiple different shell environments as sort of a core building block to foster this ecosystem of alternative shells that are cropping up in Python. Yeah, I think uh, I think also providing those utilities. I know there's a library called SH that aims to be a, a subprocess replacement that allows you to do like from SH import LS and then just mingle uh, standard shell commands with, with the rest of your Python code as, as native Python functions, but it's not terribly useful because of like how at the base level that the shell interacts with python because all of the shell command standards how they're implemented with um, sort of like your c standards they return zero um, on a successful call or one on an unsuccessful call instead of as you would in a modern language like throwing exceptions essentially and, and separating output by new lines not being able to buy typed output i think a lot of those commands aren't in sh are they're not really satisfying because they don't they're not they're not pythonic really and i think making um sort of a library not necessarily aimed for, for a shell like uh, Contra Ergonomica, but a standard library that you could just include in your regular Python code would be really great for um, just making Python a powerful, powerful systems management language. So when I was doing some research for the show and installed Ergonomica to play around with it a bit, I noticed that one of the things that it does on the initial launch is to instantiate a repository for the EPM, which appears to be a package manager that you're working on. So I'm wondering if you can discuss that and what your plans are there. Yeah, so I, uh, I've i essentially created about, I think, two or three packages, a uh, calculator package, a uh, work points package. I've created a few very basic uh, packages for Ergonomica, uh, but I think sort of package, package management and like extensions for Ergonomica are where it really shines because of the fact that each, um, each Ergonomica function is just a Python function, it makes implementation really simple. Instead of needing to juggle fish shell syntax, you, uh, you just get to use what you're used to, what you're used to in Python syntax. And I think that um, extensions in Ergonomica, since they can just be pure, pure Python files, are they're a lot easier to write because of that. And they just allow you to interface your little Python extensions. Say you wanted to write a program to graph numbers in your terminal. You already know how to do that in Python. You can just write something up real quick and just have that in your normal in your normal shell environment. So I think that extensions are, are a major part of it because of its um, pure Python focus. And I'd I'd love to see some of this uh, extension implementation mirrored in 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 Conch. Is is where it is where it would would really shine because of because of the ease of implementing new commands in your shell. And it could help newer users um, who are not familiar with like how to make a shell script or how to make like a C standard function. It would help them sort of customize their shell and build it, um, build it to be more, a more powerful tool.
And is your reason for building your own package management system for that because it simplifies the distribution among a smaller group of people so that you can build up your own personal library of plugins? Or uh, I'm curious why you decided to go that approach rather than just leaning on the existing Python package uh, repository? So um, my uh, my reasoning behind, uh, behind creating EPM was I just wanted something very simple that downloaded Python files into your ergonomica packages directory. I haven't actually given terribly much thought into um, into its superiority over um, existing existing package management tools, PyPy and PIP. Um, I don't really uh, tickle my fancy. I I don't really like enjoy how they're structured. Pip versus uh, other package management systems such as npm is kind of bare bones. It works, but um, yeah, I haven't given. Uh, I haven't like formally decided whether I would continue with EPM or whether I mean p- potentially Conda because of its its goal of cross language just general package installation might might be fit for that that that's not something that i've i've just planned out it's essentially using <laughs> wget or a python implementation of I, I think it actually uses requests it's just a very simple thing that pulls down packages from from a github repository but um one one feature of it that i that i like is that all packages are essentially GitHub packages, and um, if you've used the Mac, Brew is really nice because of how y- any uh, Brew package is just, or, or Tap is just a repository. And as a result, it makes it really easy for for hobbyists to set up their own their own packages, add them to the to the standard package listing, create their own taps for their own sets of packages. And I found that tool uh, super powerful. And I think that going in whatever direction, whether that would be continuing the development of EPM or switching to another package manager that uh, facilitated download through GitHub or a similar version control system, I, I might pursue. I just, for now, like how that's implemented. And it's just been what's what's most simple for me as of yet. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to be said for stripping away a lot of the formality of distributing the packages and just downloading a file or a set of files without having to have all the associated metadata and infrastructure necessary for listing on the Python package index, particularly given the fact that uh, some of the target audience for Ergonomica are people who don't necessarily have or want to have all of the requisite knowledge that goes along with bundling up those uh, additional pieces of information mm-hmm. though um, I, I must uh, I must say like I think that um, you've got to balance like your sort of hobbyist approach like uh, that homebrew's taken in in making each package a, a github repository and then also um, balance that simplicity with like some power so dependency management and good dependency management is something that pip isn't terribly great at uh, once you like use virtual ends that's um, somewhat remedied and i know uh to back uh, to bring back up conda they they have they've created a virtual env alternative in that and i think that um if i were to want this project to grow to allow you to say on some even production server have some ergonomica script to manage your files or allow you to use Ergonomica to manage the file system. I would like more powerful uh, dependency management, dependency resolving, uh, so you can build sort of a a robust package, package setup. Another platform that would be worth looking into for inspiration is the Nix package manager because of the fact that it does allow for having multiple versions of the same packages installed simultaneously without stepping on each other, which is one of the areas where Python and a number of other languages have issues, and that's where we end up with solutions such as virtualenv or gem sets from RVM, things like that. So uh, is it this... uh nixos.org slash nix, a purely functional package man- manager. Yep, yep, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, I've heard about that. So as you mentioned at the beginning of the episode, you're currently a high school student and looking through your websites and your GitHub repositories, it looks like you've been able to build up a fairly 
comprehensive list of different projects that you've been involved in. So I'm wondering how your age has factored into the kinds of projects that you've been engaged in and the experiences that you've had engaging with the open source community. So uh, my my age has actually driven me to open source development in the fact that sort of when you're initially getting started with making software, you're not doing it for a company. You're just tinkering around. At least that's what I uh, what I experienced. And um, once I started making tools a little bit more and collaborating with a few friends on projects, uh, on Python projects, I t discovered GitHub and realized that version control was a lot better than just sending files back and forth. And so I just started posting my projects on GitHub. And eventually I decided to reach out, look at other projects, and also contribute on my friends' projects. And that basically drove me to open source development because I, I remember after making countless random tools that were essentially useless, I, on, on Ergonomica, on a very early alpha of Ergonomica a while back, somebody posted on a Hacker News and I got suddenly an influx of, of people starring the repository and people making pull requests and issues. And that really sort of catalyzed my um, drive to, to continue into open source development. I found it really cool that you had people all over the world basically contributing for free on, on products. And I found it I found it just really cool that um, I mean if you take a take a look at very large projects that have been been maintained by open source communities such as I mean Linux, you get a sense of like the power of that kind of development. And once I once I had really experienced that, I realized um, n number one that I could contribute to anybody's repository on GitHub regardless of where I was in the world, my status, I could, as a high schooler, contribute to any project I wanted on GitHub as long as my contribution was was valuable. And I I gradually made a few open source contributions over time, and then after PyCon, um, uh, started making a few more on on PyB. And essentially, um, up to now, my being in high school and my not having like the status of being a professionally employed software engineer has meant that I've created free and open source software. And it's been a very helpful community for me to, to learn programming and for me to work on um, increasingly complex tasks and even just contribute to, to the tools I use every day. Well, for anybody who wants to follow the work that you're up to or get in touch to discuss some of the projects that you're involved in, I'll have you add your preferred contact information to the show notes. And so with that, I'll move us to the picks. And my pick this week is a board game that I picked up recently to play with my kids called Magic the Gathering Arena of the Planeswalkers. And I actually picked up the the Shadows over Innistrad expansion release, which can also be used as a base set. And it's a fun meld of a deck building game that uses some of the same kinds of ideas as Magic the Gathering with a miniatures game. And it also has a... Uh, physical board that you can add different types of terrain to that impacts the way that your units can move around the field. So it's got a really great uh, dynamic and set of uh, rules and the gameplay is very adaptable and malleable, but at the same time, it's also still constrained and simple enough to be able to appeal to a very broad range of ages. So it's a lot of fun and it has a, uh, it se seems like it's going to have a decent amount of staying power as you add some of the different expansions or just modify the terrain using your own different uh, pieces that you can build for it. So uh, definitely a fun game to check out. And with that, I'll pass it to you. Uh, what are your picks for us this week, Liam? So this week I have a few picks. The first one, uh, probably most of you have have um, have tried out or at, le or at least are aware of. But I just like to emphasize that this is this is something that I've used really extensively. GitLab Community Edition is a great um, is a great way to host um, free organizational uh, Git repositories. I've used it with groups of friends to essentially manage the repositories that we didn't want to. Uh, necessarily put public on GitHub. Uh, it's completely free and just allows you to self-host your own GitHub clone. And GitLab as an organization, they're really committed to transparency and they're coming up with new features every day. Their continuous integration system is really innovative. 
uh, uses Go and allows you to like spin up nodes whenever you want. It's a really a great innovative way of, of managing your Git repositories. The second is something that I heavily utilized for, for Ergonomica for its um, terminal support, uh, which is Python Prompt Toolkit, uh, Jonathan Slender's um, package that is essentially an NCurses clone, but with sort of your modern amenities of uh, something like Qt that allows you to create interactive um, terminal applications. And it's you don't necessarily have to harness it for, for creating terminal applications. You can use it to create very simple, um, very simple prompt, uh, prompt-based applications. So you can integrate autocomplete. You can have it automatically suggest previous commands you've typed based on what you've, um, what you've already typed. You can scroll through the history. It allows you to, to create and also provide syntax highlighting, just, just a variety of different, different things that you would need for, for creating an interactive command line prompt. And then my third pick is something that um, I've gotten a lot of my old uh, programming books from, like, or not necessarily old, but uh, like Lex and Yak, the, the Unix book I have. It essentially allows you to buy used books um, at a discounted price, and as a result, you can buy really classic uh, programming books and all of your O'Reilly books for essentially five bucks a pop, which makes it great because you can just, for the price of, I don't know, two coffees, learn a new, learn a new language with the de facto manual. So it's, it's a great resource for, um, for programming and I, I believe other, other academic books. Thrift Books is definitely a great shop. I've used it for a number of different additions to my personal library as well, and I continue to go back because it does have a very broad selection of material and uh, great availability and pricing. All right. So with that, I would like to say I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to share your work on Ergonomica and your experience in the Python community, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.